really want to keep out of America with this new ban, already being challenged in the US courts? Well, one example is my next guest, the Conservative MP Nadim Zahawi, who made his anger and upset clear on social media overnight, and he joins me now. Uh, Mr. Zahawi, first of all, why are you banned from America, as you understand it? Mm. Well, because, um, as the order says, uh, aliens from these countries include people whose country of origin would have been Iraq, as it is mine. So you were born in Iraq. I was and that born is in why. Baghdad in Iraq. Last year, when the visa free travel waiver was taken away from dual nationals, um, the advice to us from the US Embassy was to go for an interview. So myself and my wife, my wife and I both had to go be interviewed. Now it was uncomfortable, but it was understandable because clearly the United States needed to tighten up its um, uh, immigration uh, policy and of course visa restrictions was part of that. And I was granted then a 10-year visa uh, after the interview, uh, as was my wife. Our two sons, our twins, are at Princeton University, so we do need to travel quite a bit to so your America. your sons are at university in America. in America. You are a conservative MP. How does it make you feel that Donald Trump doesn't want you in America now? Uh, gosh, I don't think I've felt discriminated against, probably since little school, when kids were very cruel, um, as a young boy coming from Iraq mm. or Kurdish origin. Um, for the first time in my life, last night, I felt discriminated against. It's demeaning. It's sad. Um, my, one of my sons had a life-threatening illness last year. He spent about two months in hospital in Princeton. Wonderful uh, health care in Princeton University Hospital. Uh, but we couldn't have travelled if we were going through the same thing now. Um, and there are many, many other human stories that we've been hearing about from the community in, in the UK. And there are hundreds of thousands of people who were born in Iraq, um, whether Kurdish or, or Arab or uh, any other uh, uh, ethnic group, who are now British citizens. Uh, and you know, I always thought and so we, we are equal uh, as British citizens. I'm proud that Stratford-on-Avon, 98% white, voted in Nadim Zahawi, the son of immigrants, an immigrant to this country as their member of parliament. And, and, you, I, and I hope he'll reconsider this. And your passport, like my passport, says that Her Majesty's government will look after us abroad. And so presumably you think it is now down to your government to make representations quite quickly to Donald Trump and the American administration to think again on behalf of British citizens caught by this. Well, I'm reassured by my Prime Minister Theresa May's uh, statement because she, she quite clearly says she disagrees with this. She quite clearly says she will make representation on behalf of every citizen. Now, you know, I'm a successful man and, and a, you know, a, a politician. Um, it's all the, the people who don't have the platform that I have Absolutely. who could get stuck in, in an airport for hours and hours of no fault of their own. They're British citizens and they should be looked after. And you made your displeasure clear on your social media platform. You, you tweeted a wonderful quote of Winston Churchill's. I think we've got it up on the screen. An appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile, hoping it will eat him last. Who are you talking about? Well, anyone who turns the other way. I don't think we should look away when President Trump mm. makes a mistake. I think as his closest allies, Theresa May made it very clear that when that brilliant speech to Congress, Let, yes. that when she talked about us going after the ideology of Daesh, not just on the battlefield, but the ideology, this plays into their ideology. This is counterproductive. It is... You get fling, flings petrol on the fire. Huge. Well, just think of all the refugees. Put aside those you know, in, in my position, but the refugees from Syria and elsewhere who America has been a cradle of safety and humanity and care for them and freedom in the past. The, the message to them today is you're not welcome. I think that is cruel. Now, you must have watched, like all of us, Theresa May's uh, press conference in Turkey, where she was asked three times whether she condemned the American decision, and she didn't reply. How did that make you feel? Well, I think my Prime Minister, quite rightly, uh, is, was being cautious. It was a developing story. We didn't, I didn't know the so details until very you know, late yesterday uh, that this would apply to myself and, and, and uh, to my wife and I. Um, so uh, I think her being careful is a good thing, but she was also very candid with, with mm. President Trump. She spoke very candidly and very clearly at that speech to both houses so, um, when she talked about us l making this an opportunity to lead the world. And I think, you know, even, mm. dare I say, President Trump can think again on this. Well, he, at the moment, he is due to come to this country and address both Houses of Parliament, including yourself and many other people, maybe, who are affected by this ban. Do you think Parliament should think again about that? Well, I'm, I'm hoping he'll reconsider this position. I think this is hugely discriminatory. I think U.S. law 
uh, doesn't allow for discrimination by nationality or religion. So I, th I hope he'll reconsider this. Uh, and it is, as I said, counterproductive to the fight against Daesh, which we're all fighting together. Absolutely. And he wants to defeat, so I hope he will reconsider. Mr. Sir Harvey, thank you very much indeed for coming in to talk to us today. And so to the weather. There's absolutely nothing positive to say about this week. Bleak, grim, grey. This is surely the nadir of the year, and things can only get better, and they better had. Chris Fawkes is in the weather studio. Chris. Andrew, the important thing to remember is I'm not to blame, yeah? Actually, for some of us, we've had a glorious...